Hello YouTube, I hope everybody is doing great. Today I want to show you a project that I'm working for a client of mine, very dear client. And um, anyway, as you might know, I use, uh, well, that doesn't matter, Eagle Cat Soft for designing my PCBs. And then I do print them out on paper for checking if the parts fit, if the alignments are right and whatnot, and if like footprints are correct for this rotor encoder, for example, barrel rotor encoder, very nice. And um, on this particular PCB or project, it consists out of three PCBs. This is the main board on the bottom. This is the one that goes on top in an angle like that. And another one in an angle, 90 degree angle like that to the front. I did order them like this because it did save me on, uh, on stencil space and on PCB amounts. So then after that I use my saw to cut them apart, which I will show you. A little big, I hope it does fit. So this is the saw I'm using and I have this from Banggood, link is in the description if you want to get one. And here you have also an attachment for any rotary tools. And uh, anyway, this is uh, um, Lionel, I did not build this, I bought this, well actually I was, it was sent to me by Banggood for review. Thank you Banggood for that. So with that, I do cut these PCBs apart. There's also a smaller piece of PCB. This was also uh, ordered as one PCB and then I did cut it apart. And this is for a magnetic connector because this whole thing has also a base unit. Oh, that's over here. That has also a magnetic connector and it will be detachable if you want to take it with you and there's a battery and all this talk this is how it looks like as of now and um, I did have solder pads that I used for putting these together and making the electrical connections obviously and I use these never throw away small pieces <laughs> I don't so they're always useful. I had also these corners, but these were not uh, 90 degrees exactly because I did cut them. And uh, anyway, I had these pieces of profile, 20 by 20 millimeter, and I used these as uh, for aligning the 90 degree that I needed. And I also have, you can see here, didn't take it out yet, pins, two millimeter pins. Let me show it on from the back. So I had pins going in here on both sides of the PCB to stabilize it again for the soldering process. After that, they are not needed anymore. I do also use those pins to align my PCBs. So I don't need a PCB, uh, how you call this, uh, stencil machine, I think it's called. I don't need that. I have the holes in the PCBs and i have the holes this way on the stencil and all i need to do is i did i think i showed this before but for any new view, uh, viewers so when i align those holes and put the pins in there these are the stainless steel pins it does align perfectly uh, for the solder mask uh, for the sol solder paste to be applied and even if this shifts around on the table and I turn it and whatnot, the PCB and the stencil is always aligned and will not shift no matter what you try. And then I'll just take the pen stencil off, pencil, yeah, the stencil off and have my applied solder paste and then applied uh, parts and reflow it, obviously. So anyway, this is how it looks like. Uh, since these are actually soldered, I can take these out. I just attach them with double-sided tape. 
and now I have this um, sculpture of PCBs. This is actually the first time I'm doing something like this and turned out quite good, quite nice. And I have all these modules. This is the first PCB I'm making, so I am putting all the modules on uh, female pin headers. So in case I have to troubleshoot something, I can take them individually in or out and whatnot uh, to see if I have any problems. Some of them will be uh, will be kept on female headers because this is a microphone, for example. And I might extend this even furthermore to get it to the edge of the case. It, it will go in a 3D printed case, obviously. Um, something like this but bigger and it will have holes in it i used the uh, pen i was gonna say pe pentagon but hexagon holes and this is just a test print awful i don't know why it came out like that but anyway uh that's for uh, uh, another video so for now i have everything attached by pin headers so I can test this out it also has a long range module which later on will be obviously soldered in to have it stable in there and not move around although it will be the hole will uh, the connector will come through the case and be screwed down and whatnot so anyway this is what it is for now this particular has also a torch feature that my client wanted so it will have a flashlight and here's the one that I used on my breadboard to test it out and these come off actually something fell down so uh, it's a 3 watt LED and that will go in here and well the lens will come back towards the LED obviously so as for the features um, I mentioned this in my previous video but uh, this is the video for this project particularly so it has a torch it has a radar sensor human presence radar sensor obligatory neo pixel light sensor display on the top we have the rotor encoder here will it will have a metal switch that will sit something like this higher a little bit why doesn't this fit through here the other one hit Oh, <laughs> why doesn't it fit through here? Because of the pin header. That's gonna be gone anyway on the final. Uh, this is the first test. I will then desolder the pin header. And this is actually the pin header for the CO2 sensor. And the other reason is I want to have, I put this on pins actually, is to have the distance to the PCB so it won't pick up any heat from the PCB. So that's why this switch doesn't go through here because of the pin header. Otherwise, so it will have a, this is for the torch. And um, the torch has its own LED driver. Again, I decided to do it like this with, um, by using modules because of the heat dissipation. So I didn't want to put this on the PCB itself. Other sensors like the ADXL345 accelerometer sensor is directly on the PCB because it does not generate any heat. And then I have also a BMP temperature and a pressure sensor that goes in here. And the microphone I told you about, the long range uh, um, uh, transceiver module. And I also have an amplifier for a small speaker that it will get. 
So this whole thing could be used as web radio or whatever output sound output you need. So that's that. And um, oh, up here I have also a time of flight sensor. And the client just wanted to get all the sensors I could find in here. So I did. Oh, most of them, maybe. So we have a time of flight sensor that will go up here again. And the pin header for here is to get it in line with the PCB case later on. So it will sit nice and flush uh, in the case. We have a GPS module, on off switch, heavy duty on off switch. And uh, here's the reset button that will get a small hole from the top in case he has to reset the uh, ESP32S3 module that I'm using. And uh, Type-C connector, a LiPo battery with the charger obviously. And um, it will also have wireless charging capability. So when he... So this is a, essentially a two-in-one product. Well, more than two-in-one, but this is the base station that will stay at home with the poker pin on the here and on here like I showed you with this PCB and then he can just unclip it and take it with him to his office or wherever he wants to and um, use it there for data collecting environmental data or whatever he wants to do with it time stock i mean you know with esp32 you have bluetooth and wi-fi capability and can do whatever you wish for it and i am this is for my client and i first had this idea many many years back about the small cube and back then i wanted to use a pr pir sensor the heat sensors for a small device that you can put in your room and then like an alarm you get notified if somebody goes in there or not so this is my version of that and this just coincidentally does more or less the same thing so i will have a small the same display and the human presence sensor it should be on the table somewhere maybe not <coughs> And uh, this will be also obviously based on ESP, the same CO2 sensor, microphone, speaker, and uh, CR123 uh, battery for power. And this will be just a small unit. And actually that case that I showed you, that one was uh, just a design for that. So this will go in like that. It will obviously have the rest of the case. And here I printed it in white, but had some uh, filament sneak in here. So this would how it would look like uh, look like in white. So on, on this version, obviously I have also, well, you can see it because on here it's just the front side. Um, it will have again solder uh, points to attach the front in a 90 degree angle so anyway this will be my project that i will have to finish and i will sell my own and this one will go to my customer obviously after they are finished so i just wanted to actually show you how i did align the pcbs by using these uh, aluminum profiles because I do have actually uh, I forgot the name for this but uh, this just doesn't didn't fit anywhere and would obviously fall over and whatnot uh, with these I could just stick them on here double-sided tape and then have it nicely aligned otherwise you need four hands to do stuff like this so anyway this is it for today's uh, video or segment i don't know if i'm gonna upload these separate or put them all together in one video probably do it separate because it's gonna be too long if i put them all in in, uh, in one video anyway this is it 
and if you want to see the rest of this please do subscribe to my channel hit the notification bell and um, you can support me by just liking the video or hitting the thanks button or the super button below the video or buy me a cup of coffee through paypal or check out my tindy store you can check out my links in the description for the saw for example it's really useful for cutting edges of pcbs and or whatever else you want and um, yes this is it thanks for watching and take care everybody